had an interesting thought today, which we'll see if it holds or uh, passes the big L logic test, but I was thinking about love, I guess, ultimately. Um, and I had a thought about like a definition for it or a way of explaining what it is and kind of a first principles way of like truly understanding what's underneath it. And it was one of those things where, you know, the definition of love, like that's so elusive, it's there, you actually can't define it, right? Therefore, if what I'm saying is true, that's pretty significant. But obviously inherent in that is a view of like, that would be somewhat arrogant to assume um, that you've defined love in some accurate, unique, um, value-add way that nobody else ever has. So I'm fully aware of that. So likely this ties closely to something somebody else has said or what have you, and maybe it's just a realization that I'm coming to and good for me. Maybe it helps contribute to a better understanding overall. Awesome if that's true, but you know, if not, all good. Okay, so enough of a preface. So the thought is that um, I've been talking a lot lately about these base value drivers that our subconscious, ultimately our mind, is constantly running this kind of pleasure versus discomfort meter. Um, and what determines the calculation and what's valued and how it's valued are these base value drivers that really, in almost like a primal way, are the things that we really want. And as an example, and perhaps the most obvious and strongest of them, is the kind of evolutionary genetic drive to survive and procreate, right? So a lot of things, maybe all things, root off of that. Um, and then maybe you want certain things based on that. Maybe you need to feel like you're powerful because you want to feel attractive to where you can get more mates because it feeds to that need to procreate, right, as an example. Um, or maybe you feel like you need to um, be in really good shape because you want women to like you, same concept, right, whatever it is. So it could play out in all different ways. Now, you probably want to do some work to understand those base value drivers and their offshoots, kind of the roots that shoot off of them, because some of them might not be big L logical, right? It may be your subconscious running some bad math, and you shouldn't actually want that thing. But the point of it is the base value drivers, and the reason it's relevant here is that there's something in them that is real and true, that for you to live your quote-unquote best life, you would want to um, feed those value drivers, right? In the best way possible, you would want to feed them the most nutritious, you know, feed you could. So the superficial stuff, the stuff that might be your subconscious breaking bad, doesn't feed them as well as the real, real thing. Um, if you believe that, and you think about that in terms of love, I think you might be able to describe love as finding somebody, right? A partner that um, is as aware as you, right? You can think of it like the matrix, like is, has kind of a red pill perspective to really appreciate and have perspective on what this whole thing is and what we are and how our egos come into play and the mental flaws of the mind and like has a general aware, not perfect at it, right? But it is aware of it so that you feel like that's a, a good thread to have connected by, right? So you have somebody that is that mindset, but then also their source code, what they value right? What they want to do, what, how it all works out, their abilities, their skills, whatever, um, their characteristics, personality, it fits perfectly with the things, your base value drivers, right? So it's the perfect, most nutritious, rich feed you could give those value drivers, right? So it's the most potent form of feeding that. And it's done in kind of the Saturday morning moment um, idea that I talk about where you wake up for school on Saturday and realize you don't have school and you get to go back to bed and it's amazing because everything lines up, right? You get to go back to bed and you don't feel guilty about it. Um, same thing in this case. It's that Saturday morning moment of it's exactly the relationship they want and feeds their base value drivers and it feeds yours and those two things connect and you get like the optimal situation. To me, that's probably the best description of what love is. And, and where my mind goes with it is if like you trace love back to when the concept was first originated, I would believe that that's what it was. It was when that rare instance where that actually happens, it's such a magical thing that they needed a word to describe that sensation of how beautifully, perfectly it fit together and therefore the, the pleasure and the value that it unlocked and they started calling it love. And then humans are humans, right? We want that, <laughs> that seems amazing but it started to get tarnished, right? People started to search for it and their subconscious started to tell them that they found it when maybe they didn't. It wasn't that true, perfect connection. And then maybe it gets more and more separated. And now we use the word love and we, we engage in love way too loose and free and it's not true to the true definition. Um, so again, I don't know that that's true, obviously. <laughs> I don't even know that it's novel. 
um, or insightful in any way, but it feels like it might be. For me, at least, it helps me understand that. And I guess I'll end on this point. I could see somebody looking at this and saying, like, that's a really mechanical, kind of cold way to look at love. And I, I don't think so, right? I think it makes perfect sense. And it ties to the idea that love is beautiful and amazing. The idea of finding that perfect fit where you have that Saturday morning moment and there's no guilt and you love that person and they love you and the fit is there in terms of your you're meeting their value drivers, they're meeting yours, um, and everybody's feeling good about that and it's all connected, that is magical. That does and should elicit feelings of deep, like I almost can't even explain how great this is. So I think it actually works very closely and connects to the concept of love as we normally think about it. It just gives kind of a first principles, potentially, framework to better understand it and have more clarity on what it is.